Betsy Klein had perfect pitch, even as a child. But she couldn't read music. She was a self-taught musician. She made things happen for herself. She redefined country music, moving it away from the honky-tonk and into a more refined sound that attracted a broader audience. And that contralto voice, it's been praised for its emotive, expressive quality. Klein once said of her voice, Oh Lord, I sing just like I hurt inside. Patsy Klein was born during the Depression in 1932 as Virginia Patterson Hensley. Her family was very poor and she spent a lot of her childhood helping make ends meet. She worked in a poultry factory, plucking and butchering chickens. She also worked in a soda shop. When she was 13, Patsy got rheumatic fever and was hospitalized with a throat infection. She was very sick, spending days in an oxygen tent. Remarkably, she recovered. And what's even more remarkable, when she opened her mouth to speak, her voice had changed. The illness had turned her into a booming contralto. She fell in love with singing and began performing with her mom. Klein was driven, even at a young age. At 14, she queried the local radio station, the one across the street from that soda shop, asking if she could perform on a show. She was an immediate hit. This got her regular gigs at area nightclubs. When she was 15, Patsy penned a letter asking for an audition on the biggest stage. She actually got one. While nothing came of it at the time, it still showed her spirit, spunk, and determination. The audition? It was at the famed Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. The next stop for Patsy was on Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts in 1957. This was a talent search program somewhat similar to today's American Idol. Her song, Walkin' After Midnight, wowed audiences. So did the cocktail dress she wore instead of her usual cowgirl outfits sewn by her mother. She won the show, and her song shot up to number two on the country charts and number 12 on the pop charts. Patsy's stage name is derived from her middle name, Patterson, and her married name, Klein. While the marriage to Gerald Klein was short-lived, the name stuck. She married her second husband, Charlie Dick, in 1957. They had two children together. Nineteen sixty brought some new changes for Patsy Klein. She moved to Nashville. She signed with a new manager. She signed with a new recording label. She also became an official member of the Grand Ole Opry. All of these things catapulted her career. Her next single, released at the start of 1961, Things Fall to Pieces, would be prophetic for the year to come. In June, Patsy and her brother were struck head-on while driving home from a day of shopping. Patsy flew into the windshield, and her injuries were severe. When the first responders arrived, she insisted that the driver of the other car be treated first. Two of the passengers in the other car died. Patsy's injuries were considered life-threatening, and she was not expected to survive. She dislocated her hip, broke her wrist, and had extensive facial injuries that required significant plastic surgery. For the remainder of her life, she suffered headaches. A 
According to her husband, Charlie Dick, upon waking up, she told him, Jesus was here, Charlie. Don't worry. He took my hand and told me, no, not now. I have other things for you to do. Patsy spent a month in the hospital. Six weeks later, she picked up the pieces and took to the stage at the Opry. In August of that same summer, she recorded what would become one of the most iconic songs in country music history. She wasn't a fan of Willie Nelson's Crazy at first. It was difficult to sing because of her lasting rib pain from the accident. But when it was time to record her vocals, she did so with one take. When Patsy performed Crazy at the Grand Ole Opry, she received three standing ovations. Patsy released her next two albums, Patsy Klein Showcase and Sentimentally Yours, over the next two years, respectively. In early 1963, friends and fellow country stars Dottie West and Loretta Lynn say that Patsy shared with them a feeling of impending doom. She had a sense that she wouldn't live much longer. West and Lynn chalked it up to paranoia and stress. On March 5th, 1963, Patsy was returning from a benefit concert in Kansas when her plane crashed in the Tennessee wilderness. She was 30 years old. Patsy Klein was a trailblazer. She was outspoken and bold, breaking the mold that female singers needed to be demure. She was the first female to wear pants while on stage at the Grand Ole Opry. In 1962, she became the first woman in country music to headline her own show in Las Vegas. Klein proved that a strong woman could have a strong voice. She became the first solo female artist to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1973. Patsy Cline's greatest hits, released four years after her death, is one of the all-time best-selling records by a female artist. The Washington Post wrote in 2013, she was a pre-feminist woman. She didn't open doors, she kicked them down. Thanks for watching Jukebox Jams. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story about musical legends.